All right, good job. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to The Garden Home, a show about design and blurring the lines between inside and out. I don't know about you, but I think connecting kids to nature is so important. So that's what we're doing today. We're having some fun with some projects in the garden. We'll visit a children's garden in Chicago and a very kid-friendly farmstead in Kansas. And I've got a few fun projects to show you that kids absolutely love. And I'll give you an update on the Garden Home Challenge. We're at day 90 and things are moving fast. I can't wait to get started. It looks like they're way ahead of me. Okay, that's enough water, I think. <laughs> Fun indoor project that's a perfect opportunity to express some creativity with kids is making a rock mosaic. You see, these mosaics are easy to make and they keep everyone occupied for at least a little while. You're going to start by preheating your oven to 250 degrees and by making some salt dough. Now, don't worry, you should already have these items in the kitchen. You see, it's as simple as one cup of salt, two cups of flour, and one cup of water. Now, just mix all of these ingredients together in a bowl. Sprinkle a little flour on a clean counter and set the mixed dough on top. Using a rolling pin, roll out the dough to any shape you like. Then set the dough on a cookie sheet and let the kids run wild using any types of rocks or glass beads. What they're going to do is create their own masterpiece. Now when these little Picassos have finished their work of art, place the cookie sheet in the oven and bake it for about two hours. Once it's cooled, spray it with several coats of acrylic spray. Now you have a beautiful rock mosaic to set anywhere in the garden. Kids learn best when they can touch and feel things. That's why I really love the Garfield Park Conservatory in Chicago. You see, last summer I had a chance to visit and got a first class tour of the children's garden from my friend Robin Klein. You know, Robin, this is such an active place. Yeah. The kids are loving it. Yeah, they love it. Well, here we are in the middle of a conservatory. If you want to know that it's a kid's place, just put a slide. I in know. It, right? they're, they're crazy <laughs> about this. It's kind yeah. of fun. This is, must be the big feature here, these, yes, these uh, carnivorous plants. If you're a kid, you want to see a plant move. So um, you have the you have the pitcher plants as well, I can see there. Yep, the pitcher yeah. plants. And um, we have actually a pitcher plant. We might be able to see what it had for breakfast today. It's oh, yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. A little more passive. I love this one. It hangs from a tree. It hangs from the tree, and it's been digesting oh, here, something my hands. in there. I want to so see what's see in there. what it had for breakfast. Oh, my goodness. Look, there's some, some ants. Some ant bodies. There's an ant right there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, look. Oh. oh, whoops, ah, there's one. one that got away. <laughs> and there's some debris from some dead yeah. insects. Yeah. Well, wow, we just saved this spider's life. I think we did. I'm right. going to turn him loose. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So it's really about a tactile experience, isn't it? It's isn't about, it? yeah. What, what things it's feel about making like. And plants um, ready and available for touching and looking at. So yeah. everything in this room is so touchable. So anything goes in anything, here. And it needs to, you know, it needs to be sort of polka dotted or striped. Right, or right. I love the colors. So visually, yeah. it's very visually, attractive. Visually, visually, this is like well, a what about book. touching things? Are there plants that they can touch? Oh, yeah, look, sensitive plants. Oh, this is one of our star plants. So the thing about plants is they don't move. Right. At least you can't see them move very often, but this one, watch what happens when you touch it. Ah, yeah. closed right up. Yeah. So it's actually, it's a it's an adaptation that it's trying to protect itself and look like it's dead. That is so cool. Yeah. Let's try this one right here. Look at it close up. Oh. It's amazing. Yeah. You can see where kids would just go crazy over that. Oh, yes. This... So we've talked about color. We've talked about sort of visual senses and touch. What about taste? Anything oh, that's, can, that's really where it's at. There's, um, there's a lovely plant called the lollipop plant over here that I'd love to show you. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's take a look. Okay. Hey, 
Hey, this is a lime tree. Yeah, it's a lime tree. This is one of our special plants here. Now here's a shrimp plant. Uh, you call it a lollipop plant. Yeah, we call it a lollipop plant because it's in the children's garden. Yeah. And one of the great things about this uh, lollipop plant is you can take this flower yeah. and actually suck the nectar from the flower. Oh, wow. That is so, so it's, sweet. It's really sweet. That's awesome. You'll never forget this. A natural smoothie. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> a lollipop plant. So good. This is marvelous. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, it was wonderful to have you yeah, here. Yeah, it's really, You feel really, like a kid again? I do feel like a kid again. <laughs> this is really, really outstanding. Great. Well, thank Great. you. Well, keep up the good work. Great. Another great hands-on project that you can do with kids and will attract different species of birds to your garden is to make this very inexpensive bird bath. I know I say this all the time, but it really is easy to do. To start, you'll need some rope. I recommend a 3 8 inch either manila or sisal rope. You can pick this up at any home improvement store. You're also going to need a 15 inch grapevine wreath and a 10 inch terracotta saucer with a few branches of bittersweet. Cut three five foot lengths of rope and tie a knot at one end. Then nestle the wreath on top of the rope so that the knotted end is centered beneath the wreath. Next, take the other end of the rope and make another knot and make sure it's tied tightly because this end will be hanging from a tree. Place the saucer on top of the wreath and hold the bird bath up by the end of the rope. Make sure the wreath and the saucer are level and sturdy. Now simply hang the bird bath in a tree and weave the bittersweet branches up into the rope. The bittersweet is really for decoration, but it also serves as shelter for birds and actually some bird species will eat the bittersweet berries. With the bird bath now in place, all you have to do is fill the saucer with water, sit back and watch the birds enjoying their new watering hole. Children's Farmstead. What a great place to take kids for a fun and educational experience. You see, the farmstead is designed to depict a turn of the century family farm with close to 200 animals, vegetables, and flower gardens, and so much more. Stephanie Jones and we're at Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead in Overland Park, Kansas. Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead originally started at as the Farmstead in 1978. It was renamed to Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead in 1985 in dedication to an Overland Park police officer who was killed in the line of duty. The whole original idea of the Farmstead was to teach children about farm life, to get them exposure to farm animals. We have a pygmy goat bottle feeding pen. Children can go in and feed the pygmy goats with baby bottles. And then we also have chickens that they can feed. And also they get to experience watching a dairy goat being milked every day. that I'm holding today is Cowardly Lion. She's one of the chickens that has been raised in the general store this season. Our attendance at any given weekend with nice weather like this, we could get 5,000 visitors today. In a season, we can get over 400,000 visitors visiting the farmstead. If our fishing pond is open, they get to go and fish in our pond, and that's sometimes their first experience of fishing, and they get to feed the baby goats. They can go into our old schoolhouse. It's a one-room schoolhouse that is actually one original one that was rebuilt on our grounds, and they can have a school lesson in there. And then they can go on, see the dairy cows being milked, mm -hmm. and then they can go to the original side of the farmstead, and that's where they get to see more animals.
oftentimes we get grandparents who will tell me, oh, I used to bring their dad here when he was a little boy. So you know that they're just creating that whole memory making experience for them. And of course the kids love to see our bisons and our prairie dog. So they see, get to see animals that they don't normally see at a zoo. That it creates a great learning environment about all the different animals that are here in Kansas that is what Kansas is about and it's also an experience for families to make memories that last a lifetime. You know, getting involved with gardening projects is a great way to help kids connect to nature. Today, we're planting some tomatoes and some cilantro, getting them started in the house to move out in the garden later. You know, another great project for kids you can do in the house on a rainy day is to help them understand the importance of roots and stems to the growth of a plant. With a bunch of white carnations, water, and a little food coloring, the kids will be able to see how water is absorbed into the plant and be amazed when the petals change color. First, pour some warm water into a few glasses, about half full. And then add about 10 drops of food coloring to each glass. Cut each carnation stem at an angle and place it in the colored water, and then set them aside. In about four hours, you'll see the petals start changing colors. I like to leave them overnight to get the best results. This is such a fun and easy project you and your kids will enjoy. Paige, how are we doing on the insulation bids? Well, finally we're to the point where we can get some insulation and talk about insulation. We need it. So, oh. <laughs> so we, we wanted to do a couple proposals yeah. and we wanted to talk about soy insulation right. because we had bids anywhere from uh, $6,000 all the way up to $12,500. Mm. We're going to spend probably another $1,500 more on insulation, but this insulation is very important that we get this right. This is our envelope. We, we have to get this part right. It's, it's very important to our numbers with Energy Star. What do you think of the color page? I love farm white, Alan. Well, it's not going to be just farm white. We're going to have two other colors on it. So oh. what are the guys doing? They're just trying to get our primer down? Yes, they have. We, we, the board comes pre-primed. Right. But we know from experience you need to prime it again. Right. And they're spraying it because it's a little more uniform. It's going to be more economical for us. Well, he's losing some paint he, over there. I know. He's being efficient, but look. Yes, we, we are going to lose some, but actually we're going to spend less money and we're going to go a little quicker. Well, I went around here last night before they started. It looks like they did a really good job making sure that everything's caulked. Right. And yeah. listen, we only, we, we, we're only okay about caulking the buck joints and the ends. We really don't want to caulk the bottom because we want moisture and air to get out. We yeah. don't want to hermetically seal this yeah. house. Yeah. Right. right. They they caulked right. it really well. Yeah. They caulked it right. really well, and then Tony double flashed it. I mean, I don't think these windows will ever leak ever. It 
we talked about, or have you figured out, or running the uh, well, one of modeling the, on the burlap? Well, we're, we're, the we're doing the model for the burlap, and what we decided to do, I called a couple of my decorator friends, and they said, look, just go with regular wallpaper paste, which is basically wheat paste, okay. and apply it with that. And I, I had in my head, you know, we might try something like Elmer's glue or something like that, but they said, really, probably the, the wheat paste is best. We're gonna paint it anyway. Joyce is allergic to, to burlaps. This is definitely the first time I've heard about Joyce being allergic to the burlap. Um, it makes me a little bit cautious to, to want to put that up on the wall. I said we're going to be putting it up as wallpaper and then we're going to be painting it so she was fine with that. I think it's just the particulate that gets into the air, you know, that, that, that comes off of right, fabrics right. and particularly a coarse fabric like burlap. I don't know about painting it. Um, you know, we're going to use wallpaper uh, adhesive to, to put it up on the walls. We, might want to consider using wallpaper adhesive to seal it in as well. The burlap has come in, we ordered it, mm -hmm. and um, we've got the boards and they're actually going to mop one up. Uh, on the percentage, we're probably, uh, you know, about 70 to 75 percent through. The problem is this last 25 percent is going to be hell. So it's just two people working on the whole interiors, on the finish out and everything. So that makes it just a little bit slower. Normally we would have people a specific person just to do trim, a specific person just to do cabinets, a specific person just to do a job skill in this finish out. But the way we're doing this, it's, uh, you know, Tony and Tony are doing most everything on the finish out. David, you know, I'm looking at the layout here, and this is what we talked about the last time, but, you know, once I look at it on the floor, and I look at the drawing here, just, to, just from a use standpoint, I'm at the sink, I've got the stove over here, and my dishwasher's here. Right. So I'm just wondering if there was a way to just think about, is it possible we'll pop the dishwasher in there? You know, we got plumbing coming out here. That's a bad idea. Uh-huh. Um, uh, well, this is probably the third the third time we've gone through the layout, and um, dishwasher's been there in the same space for the, the whole time. Well, I, you know, I can look at moving those things around. Um. It ultimately, it ends up affecting everything. You know, it's got like a chain reaction. So, uh, no, I, I would encourage that we just keep everything right where it is. To me, it's uh, it's kind of spaced out evenly. I mean, the refrigerator and the dishwasher are next to each other, but you cook. Yes. Okay. Uh, you clean up after you cook. Sometimes. <laughs> You know, I always enjoy getting photographs of your homes and understanding what your challenges are and what you would like to do to transform your garden into something more beautiful. Today we have a garden from Erica and Mina. Now, what, I don't have a lot of information from, from Erica, but I do know that she really would like to cover up this foundation along the front of the house. And I think there's some things we can do to really warm up this house, Erica. What I would like for you to do is think about painting the house whenever it comes time for that. Uh, maybe sort of a taupe gray or a light gray color. All right now, let's talk about some of your other challenges. You said that there's a neighbor you'd like to block. Um, since you like arborvita, what I would do on the other side of the carport is plant some of those uh, green giant arborvitas. They make an excellent, excellent hedge. The other thing I'd like for you to consider is maybe removing this tree. So if this went away and we had an open pallet to work with, and we took the mailbox and moved it over here closer to your, your walkway and drive. And then the other thing is to think about pulling your stepping stone path out from the house a bit where it would sweep around and then come back in here to step up and then maybe adding a rail here. 
I notice down here you have a trellis uh, that is hiding uh, the gutter that comes down and possibly some utilities. I like the fact that you have it painted white so it blends in. It looks like you may be trying to grow something on that. So the idea would be to start over here and punctuate this side with a boxwood. That's one of the plants that you mentioned you like. And then I would do this curved line of boxwood that would come around in front like this and back over to this corner. And in this space, so you would have these boxwoods that would create the outside edge of your border like this. In front of the house, we do a red maple tree for fall color coming up like this. And then I would fill this whole front bed here with knockout roses, which would be spectacular right here in the front. Behind the hedge, you're going to have your stepping stones that are gonna bring you up and curve around and then back up to this step. And then behind it, what you can do is then plant fern. It's a little hard to know exactly which direction this house faces, but if it gets morning sun and no afternoon sun, the ferns would be beautiful as a foundation plant here. So I would also like to have a larger plant here like a Camellia sasanqua and a Camellia sasanqua here and one also down here. I mentioned moving the mailbox down, so let's just pretend that this has been shifted down toward the drive up to the carport. What you might do there is just take the boxwood and come in around behind it with five plants, one, two, three, four, five, and then do a low ground cover under it and then let a vine grow over the top of it in the form of a scarlet honeysuckle. They have the beautiful trumpet-shaped bloom. It has a reddish color and hummingbirds love it. Erica, I hope this is helpful to you. Good luck with your project. Thanks for joining me in today's show. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope you've picked up some fun projects that you can share with kids. I'm gonna leave you with a quote from Dr. Seuss. If things start happening to you, don't worry or stew. Just go right along and you'll start happening too. For The Garden Home, I'm Alan Smith. Hey there. Can we color some more flowers? You bet we can. Excellent. More information about today's topic and other topics covered in this series can be found at plnsmith.com. Yeah, smile. <laughs> Here we go. I use your little voices, okay? Little voices. Hi, little visit the children's garden in Chicago. On the show, we're growing swamp tomatoes. Watch them, they'll do the backstroke. They're trying to run away from alligators and rattlesnakes. They don't. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Water moccasins do. Water moccasins, water. Get it? Yeah, you get it. This is a fun and easy project.